In this video, I'm going to be expa explaining how I use changing the bone's axis in relation to gravity in addition to torsion and vibration as a mechanism of increasing bone length. Um, this is based on the observation that in baseball pitching, tennis, and arm wrestling, in addition to heavy torsion and vibration in those exercises, they also involve changing the bone's axis in relation to gravity. Um, if you look at Susan Pfeiffer's um, paper that I did a video on age-related changes in the, in the, um, the external dimensions of adult bone, um, you can check the, that video on that. She found that um, in bioarchaeological data that the arm length, the arm length could actually increase. Um, and we, you know, again, we've seen that in baseball pitching, tennis, and arm wrestling. Um, so what I think is happening, um, if you think of an hourglass, you know, by tipping it over, you are moving the sand from one end of the hourglass to another. So I think you can, you can do that with bone. And, um, so my theory is that it's a fluid flow, um, that kind of stimu stimulates the bone to increase in bone length. And I emailed a, a couple scientists, um, and they said, yes, that um, gravity is a very important um, mechanism by which to change fluid flow. Um, if I, And I looked at some papers involving microgravity and they all involve changes in fluid flow. You, is, you think height, height seekers typically use inversion tables? Um, yeah, so legs, legs, you know, they, you get you do get some changes in um, in, the, in the bones axis in relation to gravity, but not so much with heavy weight. You know, there's standing hamstring curls. There's good mornings for the torso. There's decline sit-ups, but they, they don't typically involve you know heavy weights, so and they don't involve torsion. Um, for the legs, the, you all, there's also kicking, but those don't involve heavy weight either. So I think there's a lot of potential to improve in those areas if this works. And um, so far the results have been good. Um, I've done this and my wingspan measurement has gone up. Um, with the old method that I did in the old video, the wingspan measurement kind of plateaued after a little bit. Um, I, it's very unlikely to be measurement error. What's more likely is um, either the soft tissue of the fingers uh, are growing or that, um, you know, maybe the ligaments are looser in the hands and it's not actually bone. So, but I do have before four pictures. So if this continues to work, then I will, um, find a way to get hand x-rays. But if anyone else wants to try this, um, and see if they can get results, um, to, to validate it, that would be extremely helpful. I have the, the vibration device here that I use and apply to the hand. I'm not going to be demonstrating it. Um, because I can't hold the camera and the vibration device at the same time. Here are the the hammers that I use, but you can use more or less. Um, the more the better, because that gets more torsion. So what, why torsion works is that um, fluid flows from areas of compression to tension. So the more torsion on the bone, the more, torsion creates areas of compression and tension. So that increases the fluid flow on the bone. And the fluid... Fluid flow does a lot of things. It can stimulate cell growth and stuff like that. So my theory is that if fluid flow is sufficient, it can actually increase the length of the bone. And that's why we see it in the arms is because the fluid flows so much better in the arms than it does for the legs. Like I explained, the arms are constantly changing its, its relation to gravity with heavy weights. There's all sorts of exercises that do it. But there's not so many exercises that are good for the legs, like standing hamstring curls, good, mor good mornings and decline sit-up for torso. Um, uh, for the feet, there might be um, calf raises and stuff like that. Those all change the axis. Um, inversion, they call it inversion, eversion. Um, so I'm going to be demonstrating how I'm doing it for the hands right now. So I grab these. And what I do is I, I kind of do a stirring motion. All the while applying the vibration device, it, um, I it don't think it matters exactly where you apply it, but I think um, the, the, the bones you want to lengthen are the ones that you want to apply the vibration device to, but I, I kind of do in a, a variety of areas. So I, I do a stirring motion for about 50 seconds, again, applying the vibration device. 
and then I flip it over. And again, that kind of kind of think of flipping the hourglass. And then, so you, you kind of stir it. So you're kind of shaking the hourglass to get the, all that fluid flow to flow in the arms. And I do that for 50 seconds. I don't know what's optimal. It's kind of based on the viscosity of the bone, um, how long it would take for the fluid flow to one into the other. But it, you know, I would kind of be guessing on what the viscosity is. I'm just sort of doing like 50 seconds and think like you're shaking, you're shaking the fluid of the bone, stimulating all that fluid to go from one end of the bone to the other. And then I shift again, again, all the while applying the vibration device. And I do this until, um, not, I wouldn't say to failure, but to, to fatigue um, when I can't kind of hold, hold it anymore. Um, and there's a lot of potential to improve this. You can even hold more hammers. You could use um, resistance bands to get more torsion on the bone. So the, pretty much the sky, is, the sky is the limit on improving this exercise. So let me know in the comments of any ideas and um, uh, if anything needs to be explained further, I I'll be glad to talk more about fluid flow to stimulate bone growth in the longitudinal direction. And I do have uh, a couple papers that show that it's possible. So let me know.